Our scripture reading for today comes from Psalms 24, verses 1 and 2. Hear the word of the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the scripture. Take the stairs. I didn't call you by name. You called you by name. On July 18th, 2022, I fell back in love with the ocean. Now, for some of you, that might not seem like that big of a deal, but for me, it really is. You see, when I was a kid, I loved the ocean so much. Along with almost every other kid on the planet, I had a very long phase where I wanted to become a marine biologist. But as with most things I get fascinated with, I overstudied the topic to the point where I grew a massive fear of it. For example, did you know that 80% of the ocean remains unexplored? There is a spot in the Pacific Ocean called White Shark Cafe, where great whites congregate in mass off the coast of California. It's the size of Colorado, and no one knows why. Did you know that hydrothermal vents can reach up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit? Did you know that just being in the ocean can literally crush you to death? These are all the things that haunted me in my brain. Every time I went to the beach, my mind told me that every fish that hit my leg was a shark, and every ray that I stepped on was the one that killed Steve Irwin, and it wanted me next. But all that changed on July 18th, 2022. Nine of the youth from our church and three other adults went on an ocean conservation trip through Blue Theology to Monterey, California. Now, this wasn't a mission trip in the classical sense in that we showed up and we painted walls and we worked in the food pantry. Not that those aren't good (coughs) things to do. The best way I can put it is that we were the ones that received the, and the evangelism from God, God's self. We were the ones that were ministered to, and the ocean was the evangelist sent to minister to us. I spent every day doing various things, we spent every day doing various things that brought us closer to both each other and to the planet that we live on, which you will hear about here in a few seconds from the youth themselves. I, however, spent every morning before the kids woke up, walking down to the beach that was only half a block away, and would watch the waves as the sun rose. I would sit there, look out, and listen. Did you know that only 20% of God's creation has been explored in the oceans? Did you know that the ocean holds about 94% of wildlife? Did you know that two of every three breaths we take come from the ocean? Did you know that if we don't care for the ocean and make conscious decisions about conservation of animals and native plant species, that the earth will continue to die before our very eyes? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, for he established it on the waters. Then we were put in charge of caring for it. And we aren't doing that great of a job. We are constantly destroying ecosystems with non-native plants and deforestation. We are constantly hunting animals to near extinction, if not complete extinction. We need to do better. We need to be better. Now, before we hear from the youth, I want you to listen to the hymn that was our centering song for the week during our evening worship. To him called Ocean is a call to worship written by Dan Damon. He wrote it while he was driving around Monterey Bay. We will listen to the song, then we will hear how the youth experienced the trip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
be what happened. Um, our luggage is not here. They took it off and yeah. She has a picture. Real life footage. We have proof. My luggage. Picture is here. inserted here. Yeah. <laughs> My luggage made the plane. <laughs> <laughs> but six of ours did not. I think the biggest thing I learned this week was to be more hopeful because when we think about climate change or species dying out, it seems like there's not a lot we can do. But some of the information that we've learned this week has talked about uh, species that have been on the brink of extinction. And because of the efforts of humans, we've brought those populations back. So I think that made me feel a lot more hopeful about what we can do um, as a community, as a world. Places um, or situations that I saw God this week, I think the two biggest ones for me is anytime I'm near the ocean, and we were near the ocean a lot this week, um, it makes me feel connected, completely connected to the earth, to other people, connected to God, um, just the sound of the water, the smell of the ocean, the breeze coming off the water. And the second thing which I found truly amazing on this trip was seeing how the kids connected with each other. Um, even the kids that didn't know each other very well this week really bonded. Uh, we're having very real conversations and getting to know the other adults too. I feel like I know the kids and the adults in youth group a lot better than I did before this week. Uh, I'm Beatrice. I'm gonna talk about the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So we got to look at lots of different animals and also uh, apparently it used to be part of a cannery. Got to learn about a lot of different animals. Like I found this one new thing is type of squid. And then there were also like sea angels, which are really cool. And so then we had to spend like 20 minutes with an animal. So I chose this squid and I really liked them because they didn't look very smart. And then I saw God and you know, all of the life and because you know, God made all the life. activity for um, the Blue Theology missions trip is was the labyrinth that we did. Um, and a labyrinth is kind of like a um, maze type thing on the ground and it sounds kind of silly but you walk around and try to get to the middle of the labyrinth and you stay very quiet and meditative and then you walk out. And I thought it was a very uh, interesting meditative experience because you got to uh, you know sit with your thoughts for a while and um, just think and feel the ground beneath your feet and feel the wind um, and I think this relates to God because um, when you're walking through the labyrinth because it does take you know a pretty good amount of time you get to think about God and, you know, how, how the labyrinth and the sitting with your thoughts is making you feel. And so I just think that was a really amazing experience that we all got to do. What are you talking about? Whale watching. What did you do for whale watching? We were on a boat and we got to see like all the whales out in the sea. And what did you learn about the whales? That they were endangered and they came back from like somewhere else and now they live here and they like stay underwater. Some of them can stand there for like 45 minutes. Where did you see God in the whale watching? Probably whenever like they were all in groups and hanging out together.
My topic that I'm being interviewed about is surfing. We, we got to learn how to surf. We were learning how to paddle. They taught us how to jump up without managing to fall off our boards. And uh, I just, I, I learned so much about the ocean and the way that the waves form. Uh, they don't form from tides like you would assume. They mostly form from wind, actually. Uh, just all, all around, in, in everything that we do, even surfing, even the fun things, uh, I was seeing God, and I saw God in the fact that we were using His beautiful creation to enjoy ourselves and have fun and create fellowship. This week, I got to learn about a lot of things about the ocean, some connections that we had throughout the week with just everybody being together. Uh, I think we got closer as a group. And the time that I really felt the connection with God was walking through these, these beaches and uh, really learning about just being free and no matter where you are, you could always have a connection with God at any moment where, you, where you're at, so. So at the greenhouse, we uh, went to like the parking lot and then we did like a little tour of like a little, it's like apartment, like sand dunes and stuff like that. And we learned how it used to be like with some the YWCA, something like that. And uh, there are like these little plants that like, kind of like took over and we learned about how they like transformed that and stuff. So that was really cool. And then we went over to the greenhouse and kind of like uh, made some soil, fresh soil. And then we like looked at the different plants and like the process to like grow them and like put them out like in the sand dunes. So that was really cool. I learned that you can really like harm an environment if you like don't like um, take care of it. And I also learned that it's really easy to like, like if like um, a plant's dirt had a um, infection or like something like that, that could be transmitted to another one. It's really important to like not have that happen. So you have to like really deeply clean it. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. And I, know, I didn't really know that. And then I saw God in when we were getting some like uh, potting buckets and like we were cleaning them because whenever everybody else went into like uh, the little greenhouse and like water the plants and like re like potted them, I was outside still clearing them because I got really attached to it and I just saw God like saying this is what you like you should keep doing it this is good for you and I just thought it was really nice it was really fun okay I'm talking about kayaking and um, we were just kayaking down the rivers with otters and what I learned is about how all the uh, endangered animals came back and then how it connected me to God was uh, it showed me that God created all of the all of the animals and we got to protect what God created. Grabbers and trash kit and trash bags to clean up the beach. I picked up the most secret bugs uh, so the bacteria doesn't get in the sea for the animals. It was caring about the animals in the sea.
I did limpets. We researched uh, sand crabs. We would, we picked up a bunch of sand and then we put it, we siphons, uh, we like put it through this mesh thing and so then we dipped it in water and so then all the sand went out and you could see all the sand crabs. My group got a bunch of baby sand crabs. So like the adult or like the female snow crabs, they would be really big, but the males would be really small. So masculinity in the sand crabs would fall into um, the females. So you would see the males uh, cooking in the kitchen. The females were, could be like this big, but uh, I don't think I got any males. We just got a bunch of babies and they were like this. And they felt super weird crawling on your hand because you'd have like seven at a time. So we would get them and then we'd measure them. And if they were under 10 inches, you wouldn't have to decide their uh, gender. But the females, we would get them, we'd measure them, and then we would flip them on our back. And there's like this little, little um, Theseus that you flip up and then it, they, a key factor is they would have eggs and they were orange and they looked like really small caviar. It was cool, kind of nasty though. What I learned was they like to burrow themselves. I have them in my hand and they'd burrow themselves in between my fingers. I saw a god after I was in, okay, so a little bit during the water, it was really at peace. I was just like standing there and walking around and it was really nice. But then I got stung by a jellyfish. Like that dude came out of nowhere. And so then I walked up to Julio and some of the other church and was like, I got stung by a jellyfish. And then everyone went into action and they just knew what they were talking about. While we were here, we learned a lot about the community that was being built and we all came together to help. I normally wouldn't have talked to a lot of the people that I did talk to while I was here. I'm more of like a close type of person, but when I was here, I felt very open and I felt like we were all here for the same thing, so it was easier to be all together and open up. It was very nice to see people to get around and do the same things, and it felt, felt kind of comforting to know that we all, even though we're not from the same place, we all share the same type of love and happiness and it's nice to see that we weren't just sticking with the people that we knew and we were sticking with what we love and inviting other people with us along our journey it brought me closer to god because it no, like it made me realize that when more than one people like person shares the same type of love for a certain thing or whatever. It can bring a lot of people together if they share the same type of love and it gives off such a nice energy and it makes things better because you can connect with people on a deeper level. On this mission trip, I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot about Monterey Bay and the fact that it is a sanctuary so that there won't be overfishing and they can protect the species that are here. Um, I learned that I don't get seasick, which was interesting. <laughs> I also learned stuff about migrant workers in California as we drove through some of the fields where they were working. Um, interesting facts about why you should be buying organic. It's less about you not getting the chemicals in your body and more about protecting the workers who are picking the fruits and vegetables that grow here in Central California. Um, we learned a ton and I think we're going to come back with a new respect for the ocean. Um, there was a ton of amazing God sightings this week, but probably the biggest is the way that our youth bonded with one another. We kind of had two little clusters, some younger middle schoolers and some older high schoolers, and it was really good feeling to see them genuinely enjoying one another because they're not visitors. They're all members of our church, so they will take these memories back and build on them each year as we go on future mission trips. So thank you to everybody at FCC that helped make this possible. Sea chicken, do you want to say something? Y'all, the sea chicken won't do an interview. I tried six times to get the sea chickens to do an interview and they wouldn't squawk for me. I was a little upset. 
Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time that we have here on earth, and we thank you for the opportunity for some of us to go over to California and to learn about the ecosystems that exist along our coastline and how even us inland and landlocked can do things that can make a difference and can make positive change for our beautiful, beautiful world that we get to experience every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us go together to the Lord's table.